The following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. I'm Ralph Tycho with the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and it's time for New York City Baseball Mets Variety on a day that pitchers and catchers reported to spring training. Whoa! Robert Cole, Marty Rose, the two Met Mavens. How are you guys? Very good. Good, Ralph. Good. I'm fine, too. Um, I'd like to talk about ownership and um, what's going on in um, in Wilpunsieville. Wilpons- um, start with you, Robert. Well, uh, a few weeks ago, we were more or less ecstatic when we heard that Steve Cohen was going to take over the Mets. Um, the agreement was a five-year takeover where the Wilpons would both run the team for five years. Uh, Cohen would <clears throat> infuse money and in five years would basically take over the operation. Um, Unfortunately, I think Cohen went in believing that while he made this agreement that he would have a say in the running of the Mets. And MLB put a stop to that a week or so ago by reminding the Wilpons and Cohen that according to their charter, one person from each team is designated as the representative for the team. Um, In hockey, they call them governors. Each team has a governor who handles his team's uh, policies and everything with the league. And in this case, it would be Jeff Wilpon, uh, who is the designated person. And uh, when Cohen heard that, he tried to change... Uh, some of the wording of the contract. Um, The Wilpons supposedly were giving him a a break on the price because they were going to be still running things for five years, and so they gave him a break on the price. So that would have to change, and all of a sudden it just imploded, and uh, Cohen walked away, which has left a bad bad taste in MLB's mouth, uh, mouths, and uh, supposedly he will never get another chance to own a team. Whether that's fair or not, I don't know. Okay. Marty, anything to add? Well, uh, you know, the latest things that I've seen is that the Wilpons are now willing to uh, sell to an owner with no preconditions. Well, so, I saw that today, Marty, and I uh, thought, is this too good to be true? Well, it says likely to assume immediate control. But how are they going to find somebody else that's got $2.6 billion? Uh, you know, they had one guy, and he got away. Yeah. So it's not going to be easy. And the Do pr- they and the have price? our call-in number? Yes, yes, he does. Oh, okay, just in case they <laughs> humbled themselves and wanted to ask and came to us. I think the three of us would have no trouble coming up with it. But who is going to be the governor? Mert? Robert? Governor? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's, like if we buy, the, if we had the 2.6, oh, I see. one of us would have to be the governor. Like, yes, the point, like in the hockey. point, the the point, point of contact. <laughs> Right. The point of contact with MLB. That's now the okay. other, the other, the other thing in this ownership thing is the price is going up over what Cohen was going to be charged because of the fact that the Wilpons are going to step away and the new owner takes over immediately, and the new deal does not include the SNY network. Uh-huh. Or the owner, or the ownership of the stadium. Well, I don't. Isn't well, that uh, I, municipally owned? 
Yes, I believe I believe that's municipally owned and is a lease. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, wow. I... So, you know, as as Marty said, you know, you had one guy that was you know willing to put that money up, and now that price tag is going to go up, and where are you going to find somebody? Well, Marty recommended Seinfeld. Well, and I, I also heard that. That he's not interested, so. Oh, so. okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> he said he likes being a fan. That's about it. Yeah. I thought I thought yeah. he was one of those uh, minority owners, but I, I, I could be wrong. Well, Remember, yeah, he Cohen may have was a, a share or two. Yeah, yeah, Cohen yeah, was a minority yeah. owner. Is he going to sell his his share? Is he going to be forced to do that now? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, 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 can't I thought he had up to eight percent. They were selling yeah, two. Seen. They were selling uh, uh, pieces in two percents, I think, after the uh, Ponzi thing, and uh, you know, a bunch of people bought in for two million dollars each. <clears throat> and I think I thought Seinfeld was one of those guys, but uh, yeah. you know, may, maybe not. But I, I think uh, uh, Cohn had eight uh, percent. I thought. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I guess he's going to have to get rid of that as well. Okay. Um, yeah, Remember that, when we were question. kids and we'd go to the sports section just to avoid this sort of bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's the score? Who won? That's it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Who's pitching? <laughs> uh, lost again. <laughs> True, Was it Herb true. Moford this time? Um, uh, Howie Nunn. How, oh, another another name from Cincinnati originally. <laughs> Hadn't thought about him for a long time. Uh, Moorhead, <laughs> ba- Bauda, all the, they had. Uh, actually, they had four good pitchers. They had Craig. They had Bob Miller. They had um, Alvin Jackson, and uh, Jay Hook. I guess they thought they had four. <laughs> Jay Hook, if I can't. Jay Hook. Um, Jay Hook Sherman was Sherman Roadblock decent. Jones. Yeah. yeah. Sherman. Four Sherman good Jones. pitches. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sherman Sherman Roadblock Jones, who was yeah. the answer to a trivia question, okay, right. was part of the starting rotation, the original starting rotation. Yep. Ooh. Yep. Correct. And who was the first relief pitcher for the Mets? Mm. Oh, yes. Um, in, in the first was it game? Bob Moorhead? It was indeed. Correct. Ah. That's, uh, that was the bonus round. That was. I had to go was... to the Wayback Machine for a second there and uh, close my eyes. And, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> now people do will not believe that we do this without a baseball encyclopedia right, right. in front of us. And no, I, I I'm sitting here with my hands in my that, pocket. Couldn't look stuff up that quickly. Yeah, my hands in my pocket too. Um, <laughs> Did you hear about this? Okay, one I'm more sorry. trivia question, real quick for everybody: Who got the first base hit in New York Mets history? That's a good one. Uh, you'd like to think Richie Ashburn. But no. Uh, he was only with the Mets a short short time, and then they traded him away. Did they trade him to Cincinnati for a third baseman? No. Okay, it wasn't Don Zimmer then. No. <laughs> they They got a... Good prospect with a bad back for for Don Zimmer, and his name slips my mind. But Cliff uh, Cook, Cliff Cook, exactly. And oh. he came to them with a bad back, and he left them with a bad back, <laughs> <laughs> not, and an occasional home run. <laughs> occasional. Zimmer was like one for thirty-four. I thought that might it would have been cool if that was his home run. His only hit, but it was no. Gus Bell. 
Gus Bill. Well, there you go. Number three. Um, well, think of it, and I do occasionally when I play simulation uh, computer baseball and am uh, fortunate enough to get that 1962 Met team. Um, Gus Bell, Hodges, uh, there was Gene Woodling. He, I don't know, was he an original, Gene Woodling? No, Woodling came over in a trade uh, about two or three months into the season. Okay. Well, uh, then I'll substitute his Richie Esburn's name for his and Frank Thomas and all that. All that. If you'd have gotten those guys in their prime, it would have been Katie barred the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. <But laughs> for sure. Big ifs. Big ifs. <laughs> Alan Blumkin has, um fellow podcaster, has this story of um, Gene Woodling sitting on the bench with Casey Stangle. And um, they're just sitting pregame chatting. And Casey says, it ain't like the old days, is it? <laughs> when um, Casey had him in New York, the Yankees, Yankees, and he was an integral part of that five-game world championship in a row, uh, 49 to 53. So yeah, you guys, things there changed. A, um, there was an in- interesting lawsuit filed today. Uh in case you haven't heard, the uh, guy's name is Mike Bolzinger. He pitched for the Toronto Blue Jays in 2017, and he's filing a suit, uh, unfair business practices, uh, negligence, interference uh, with contracted and economic relations, and this is against the Houston Astros, oh. and, and he wants uh, the, all the World Series money that they got donated to children's charities. On August the 4th, 2017, he came in against the Astros, pitched one-third of an inning, giving up Four hits, three walks, four runs. Was sent down, never recalled. And while he was pitching, 12 of the 29 pitches he threw had the can banging in the background. Wow. So, now he's just one guy. Right. If, if this catches on, this could turn out to be something very interesting. Whoa. In yeah, the, the, pro- the, prob- the problem is I don't think the courts will get involved with, you know, with uh, well, Major League Baseball. Depends if he, what kind of lawyer he gets. You know, he gets a big, a big lawyer that wants to get his name out there or or somebody already big that wants his uh, name better known, uh, somebody we might just take it up. Take the shit to Congress and threaten antitrust violations? Well, um, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, you uh, can, also, you have, to, you have to remember who uh, the makeup of the Supreme Court these days. Well, it's a, you know, who knows if, it, if it, how far the thing could ever get. Right. But just, you know, th- this guy could have lost his career because of what happened. And he may, you know, not have been the only guy. Uh, not to mention, you know, what what happened in the playoffs in the World Series, you know, that, that we know cost – current guys and current teams uh, big money. So, uh, And it so. wouldn't be hard for an attorney to litigate it because Major League Baseball has already said that they were guilty of it. Yes. Uh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So they're not going to have to go to court mm-hmm. and, and have witnesses. Ooh, what about this guy's career? How was he before? No, no, no. It's right out there that there was cheating. Um, yeah, so that uh, I saw that today. I said, oh. Who is this- is he suing Major League Baseball in, in total or Houston specifically? Uh, I that that I don't I don't know, but I I I assume it's I assume it's just the Astros. Well, uh, generally in those kind of lawsuits, everybody gets thrown in, okay, and it, it's left up to the uh, the courts to decide who actually is going to be, you know, the, the main people. But uh, you know, baseball, you'd have to put. Major League Baseball in, you'd have to put the commissioner in, uh, you'd have to put, you know, pretty much everybody in it, and then you see what gets thrown and sticks against the wall. Probably could, <laughs> but you know, yeah. it's uh, very, it's going to be interesting in the in the near future about to hear about that. Yeah. Uh. yeah. <laughs> Well, All right, let's get guys? back to the candy store of life. Today was pitchers and catchers uh, reporting. Yeah. Yep. Is there anything um, that we should be looking for, I, I would think, off the top of my head, the health of Cespedes and Lowry come to mind? Anybody with um, mm. want to well, agree on well. that or add to it? Um, well, mm-hmm. any the things that I've seen uh, about Cespedes, I mean, the guy looks like he's like a bull. I mean, you know, I've seen a couple of pictures of him. I mean, he looks to be in tremendous shape. Um, he, you know, he seems to be swinging the bat. He seems to be running. So who knows? I mean, as we've discussed, you know, it's his contract year. So <clears throat> I expect him to come out guns a-blazing and uh, – some guys want him traded, but I don't. You know, let's see what we have. No, I don't either. I mean, it's his contract year. Right. And, and, and not only is... that, we we had two and a half years of frustration. Right. Imagine right. how frustrating it would be if you quick trade him, and all of a sudden he catches fire with with someone. And um, right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I was just going over the uh, I was going over the roster t- today. And um, yeah, this team feels pretty much set. I mean, I picked 20, 26 guys out, you know, like in, in, in two minutes. That, that that should be the roster, you know? Yes. But the the only question is, is if Lowry is uh, healthy or not. You know, if he's not, then I guess Guillerme comes back. If he is, then Guillerme doesn't come back. But the other 25 guys, uh, very easy. You know, I don't think there's really much room for, unless there's injuries. But I don't think there's any room for anybody else besides, you know, basically the guys we had last year, plus you know Porcello and Waka, and Batances. And unfortunately, there's only one lefty in the bullpen, uh, Wilson. They only got mm-hmm. three other lefties on the roster, uh, but <laughs> you know it seems to be pretty much set to me. Yeah, okay. I, is, I agree. Is there a phenom, a possible phenom, in the making? In other words, is there someone at pushing on the door? We, um, typical <laughs> spring training type thing. Um, where you see some guy get hot and try to push the envelope. Anybody well, like they, that? They, their their guy is Ronnie Mauricio, and he's still uh, 19. Now, they had him in spring training last year, giving him a little taste. And he's the one guy that every time they wanted to make a trade, uh, his name was mentioned. Everybody wanted him. So... Uh, you know, I don't think he's ready this year, yeah. but he he would probably be the guy that, you know, would come up and make some noise, you know, in the next year or so. 
Yeah. And he was even uh, though he's a shortstop, you, there's always the possibility of moving Rosario to center field, or moving Mauricio. This kid Mauricio is, I think, already six two or six three, um, and he's probably going to grow a little bit more. So you know, he, he maybe you put him in the center field, you put him at third base. You know, there's a lot of possibilities, but he's probably. Bob Marty, a couple of years away? I would think. Uh, he, he's, he was like the 62nd ranked uh, uh, guy, 62nd ranked prospect in right. MLB. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, and that was the highest that the Mets had. Uh, well, just that he's 18 years old says yes. an mm-hmm. awful lot. Yep. Yep. Because it doesn't and they happen. Felt, you know, this they year, felt Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, we we're talking about pitchers and catchers. Um, uh, Yuri's Familia lost a lot of weight. I think he lost 30 pounds. And they had a picture of him today in the paper, and he looks tremendous. Okay. So, you know, maybe if he can get back to where he was, uh, you know, you have an even better bullpen than it's looking already. Okay. Do they have a new um, training staff, medical staff this year? Oh, I haven't I heard know. it. It was, wasn't mentioned. Uh, okay. I don't think so. Uh, the only, the only new, new thing is they hired a, a new quality uh, quality control coach to take uh, – you know the the manager's Ro, place. Rojas's place, yeah. Right. Uh, all right. Um, now, I guess there's been no change with the bench coach, right? Because you know he was I being talked about in all the different managing spots, including the yeah, Mets, no. and then uh, you know. No, I nothing, think it's still Hensley Hensley Mullins. Hensley Mullins. I think yeah, so. That's good. And the yeah. pitching coach is uh, Jeremy Hefner. Right. Yeah. First base coach is Gary D. Sarsinia. Seton Hall. Right. Well, he's the yeah. third base coach, I think. Uh, Gary oh. D. Sarsinia. First base is Tony DeFrancesco. Ah, okay. Yeah, Tony that's the guy you were trying to Francesco is from Seton Hall. Right. Gary D. Sarsinia was a... Um, Shortstop, damn good shortstop with the Angels in the, the mid nineties. Um, yep. So, anything that, um, boy, it's it almost seems like it's coming together. Dare I say? Uh, They're definite yeah, contenders at this point. Well, yeah. I mean, after winning eighty six games. Last year, uh, they should they should do better. They really should. Especially, We've you know, got we, to go back to some of those shows that we did a year or so ago and find out who came closest. That's <laughs> eighty eighty six is sounds like a Marty prediction. No, I think I, uh, I think I, I said eighty four. I think Robert had eighty six. Okay, <laughs> all right. I had I pie in the sky. I had pie in the sky. Something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're you're the ever ever the optimist, okay? I'm ever um, the pessimist, and Marty's the voice of reason. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That that sounds good. Um, just a question: of who's who's going to be the governor? <laughs> right. Um, probably Marty, because you know, yeah, I get I, I get too low and you get too high, and Marty's <laughs> right, right in between. I might go a little higher this year. I've seen as how, you know, Washington lost the uh, MVP uh, from their lineup. Uh, Rendon. Yeah. 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 And yeah, the Braves are still really good. There's no doubt about that. But I, you know, I think they, I think the Mets are better than the Phillies. You know, I don't care who the manager is. You know, the manager right. can't pitch or hit. So. Um, you know, it'll be interesting right. to see how uh, D.D. fits in with the Phillies this year, too. 
Yes. Their shortstop. Uh huh. Um, that's true. My God, that's a, a big loss for the Yankees. I mean, not even talking stats per se. Um, the intangibles. This guy was just terrific. Uh, they're gonna miss him. Oh yeah, he. Well, I mean, he. They got young he was the, yeah. You know, he was the bridge. You know, from uh, Jeter, you know, to the present. And uh, good, good they ball got player. great young players. The Yankees. I mean, just uh, Torres and um, and the like. This they're always stacked and always kind of oh, yeah. stacked. And if the Mets win the pennant, I don't want to play the Yankees. God, I don't uh, want to play them. <laughs> yeah, but wouldn't that be wonderful? I mean, I no, nah, I didn't like it the last time, and I wouldn't like it this time. <laughs> <laughs> the last time was horrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, it would be nice to play them and win. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I think they would hold their own a lot better than than they did uh, that first time they did. You know. The, right. I, what was that? Two thousand five. Yeah, it was two thousand, I think, wasn't it? Oh, two, yeah, two thousand. Wow. Yeah. 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 Oh. God. It was 20 years ago today. Yeah, okay. It was 20 was years ago already. <laughs> de- sitting in a traffic school class in Danville, California. Oh, man. Teaching it. I, you wow. guys didn't know that I taught traffic school in my no, past. We, I did not know that. No, I, I was that. an instructor and um, <laughs> would show a lot of red asphalt movies. And um, just stand up there and waste eight hours. But I taught a lot of. I, I tell you, I, I took pride in it, really, honestly and truthfully. What I did was cover all the subjects that the manual offers. Uh, you know, the demands you do: left hand turn, right hand turn, that kind of thing. But I would stress driver. What's going on in driver demeanor? What's going on in your head to be a safe driver? Mm-hmm. And that means being well rested, off drugs, off alcohol, this type of type of mm-hmm. stuff. Not necessarily off herb, but off drugs. <laughs> um, <laughs> have to make that distinction for those who turn in late and don't realize <laughs> who I am. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it just um, makes you drive slower, doesn't it, Ralph? I mean, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'll be. I, I, there is nothing that it impairs. Especially the test is if you're driving high and the light goes on behind you for whatever reason, could be a an expired registration. You will be so not high at that moment that it'll <laughs> knock your socks off. <laughs> the buzz and goes bye bye. The buzz goes very very quickly. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I would I would also it was very informative for people. I would teach them how to deal with police, police interaction, how to get it to go from the policeman to the judge. If there's any question, don't you know? Keep your hand on the steering wheel so you're not shot by the guy playing backup. All these things, but um, that but that's what I was doing that very day that um, that the Yankees lo- that uh, the Yankees beat them. Well, the, that. the funny thing, and ironically, was I was in my uh, school bus driving class during that World Series, learning how to drive a school bus. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Am I right about what I'm talking about? You can't get high and drive a school bus naturally no. because you're, you're tested. Uh, so, right. I'm, uh, and I'm not telling people to go get high, but I'm a- I'm answering Mert's question. It does make you less aggressive, yeah. more likely to let the other guy in, and um, more and less likely to be rushed or. 
How are you going to get in an accident? Because you're the aggressive one, and road rage is a killer in these day, in this day and age. Oh, I'm oh, sure they yeah. tell you that in in your in your class, Robert. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're dealing with a society of crazy people at this point um, on a number of different levels. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. What was the first clue? <laughs> well, um, I said, hello, Robert. <laughs> uh, you guys are fun for me. Let me tell Good. you. This, this podcast is great. And um, any closing I, thoughts? I got tickets, Ralph. February oh. 25th at Lakeland. I'll be there. It's well, only like 30, 30 minutes from here. Well, then we expect a scouting report on the, uh, all I, the young players, Marty. I would assume so, seeing as how very few of the veterans travel. Yeah, I'll be seeing a lot of the young guys, so. Yeah, Looking I think they have to, to have four um, rostered players mm-hmm. make the trip, and they'll play like three innings and then uh, right. go bye bye. Well, whatever it is, you know. I, I, I'll and enjoy sometimes it. it's nice to say, I saw this guy when he was just a rookie on his first mm-hmm. blah blah blah, and then oh, all yeah. of a sudden he, he makes it. That's yeah. part of the coolness of, of this all. And cool it is. Final thought, um, Robert Cole. Um, just that uh, anxious to get things going, you know, pitchers and catchers, and then uh, a week later we get everybody in camp, and you know, waiting for the the first game. With listen to Howie Rose on the radio, you know, uh, get it. Let's get it going. Yeah. Wow. Can't, um. This is nice, celebrating high holy days with you guys. This is a high holy day, <laughs> pitchers and catchers. Yeah, Most people don't know it. You could just say pitchers and catchers to a baseball fan, and they know pitchers and catchers report. They always report about a week or two early, a week, 10 days, What is, what is it, early. But you know it crosses the line, and that line is crossed uh, after Super Bowl Sunday. So. Oh, yeah. Yep. oh yeah. All right, guys. Same time next week or the week after. Let's give it a little chance to have something to talk about. Yeah, let's okay. give a couple of guys uh, time to get hurt so we have, you know, something oh. to really talk about. <laughs> oh, no. Does not it always happen? Does not it always happen? You could take a contending team and reduce them to an also ran on the first day of workouts. My hamstring, your Achilles tendons, my my right arm is aching, this, that, and the other thing. You are so right. <laughs> Let's hope for health. Well, I, not, I would like to see. Well. Uh, I, would, I would like to see Jed Lowry in a uniform and actually play. Okay. <laughs> so far, all I've seen is four pinch hits. <laughs> he had no field. He wasn't in the in the field once, was he? No, 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 I don't. Th- he did did not play in any spring games, and <clears throat> they brought him. You know, they activated him late in the year, and he had four, I think, four at bats. Mm-hmm. So solid with the A's the year before. So who knows? Oh, Juan Lagares signed with the Padres. I heard today. Oh, oh. good for him. Good. Yeah, for I was going to say good on him for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just, uh, you know, he ran into a lot of walls early on, if not walls. True. Um, and he was oh. hurt a lot. Yep. But he had that one good year. Um, and it got him a good contract. Yeah. It did. It yeah. did. So let's hope they have to offer Cespedes $15 million a year next year. <laughs> hey, how much? At least we're that. saying his name. He's not the C word anymore. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he, we can't <laughs> use him as a secret anymore. <laughs> right. Um, actually, the C word is Coulter and Coulter, if you think of the true C word. Oh, um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 
But that's oh, another okay. show. That, that's not a, ba- <laughs> a baseball another, another show. Another show at another time. Okay. <laughs> Be well, guys. See you next. Right. See you in two weeks. Okay. The sh- Enjoy. show is New York City Baseball, yeah. Mets Variety. I'm Ralph Tycho, the weak link of, of them all, and uh, Marty Rose and Robert Cole grace the microphones. Thanks, guys. And thank you for listening, everybody. Adios. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices, and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.